there we have it. Okay. So, welcome. Oh, it was being so difficult. <laughs> Got it. There we go. So, yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. So, hopefully, uh, Chris will be with us shortly. He is um, en route, so hopefully he'll be here soon. Um, I am looking forward to talking to Chris this evening about the new paperclip mandrel. Ah, and these things are amazing because they have little holes in them, first of all, and they are designed so that one is slightly wider than the other, which is really important because you can change the shape of your links a little bit. They've got little holes drilled in them so that you can wind your wire around it. Um, and you can use different shaped wire for all kinds of things. So these are really great for making uh, what's now being referred to as very popular um, paperclip chain or elongated oval chain. So these can be used for uh, all kinds of chain. So for things like this, the paperclip chain, like this right here, we love it. This can be used for bracelets, for earrings. Love the earrings. Got little pearls on them. There we go. There you go. Um, and bracelets. So mine, these, this particular link is a um, uh, kind of fun uh, because, oh, hi there. Hi, Phyllis. Um, these are kind of fun because these are a twisted link and you can do, oh, hi, knife spot. Um, so these are twisted wire that I've got going on, but you can do it with square wire, round wire, half round wire, you get the gist, right? And you can even mix match different lengths and shapes of wire to get all kinds of different profiles and different looks, different styles. You can do all kinds of combinations of, you know, two links and one link or a long link and short link. Um, so there's all kinds of possibilities. I'm actually gonna be doing a class on the 13th, I think that's right, um, 18th, February, or, God, it's March, can you believe it? March 18th on the paperclip chain. So if you want to jump in, maybe get some pointers and tips on different ways to not only get the links shaped and correct, but to get them looking uniform and getting them soldered together in a way that makes you happy and brings you joy <laughs> because sometimes these can be a little tough. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about fusing and with fine silver as well as argentium. So that makes it a little bit easier, but uh, also primarily just talking about doing some soldering with these links. Um, I also use a uh, link forming pliers, these guys, which are fantastic for doing uh, kind of a stretching the oval out. And this comes with a number of different little mandrel parts like this that can be used. Oh, I'll bet that's Chris. Oh, let's see, it is Chris. Hang on a second. Here he comes. Hey, stranger. How's it going? Ah, where are you? Hello. <laughs> Let's turn my camera on real fast. Here we go. Are you in route still? <laughs> nope, I'm. Uh, I'm home. Okay. Just right. starting my video here. Fantastic. Hello. How's it going? Hi, really good. I was just uh, getting everybody caught up on what we were talking about tonight. Um, oh, nice. so got some little examples of paperclip. Oh cheating. yeah, I actually have uh, the first YouTube debut of a new product too. Oh, the taper clip? Yes. Yes. Have you got it? I do. So uh, how much have we talked about? I just was saying that you had this this new, these mandrels as well. And I, I haven't divulged your uh, new one, your new launch, which so is they, you just launched today, right? They went on pre-order today. Great. Um, the product team, so you and the rest of the product team will have them uh, in the mail by the end of the week. Um, so what you're going to have is basically this set of, uh, oh, there's six here. So that has the same three thicknesses as the other mandrels. Okay, great. 
So you have your point, uh, your three mil, your 2.5 and your two mil. Right, okay. And each of out. the, say for example, use uh, the 2.5 mil, for example, when you order the 2.5 taper clip, right? it comes with two mandrels. It comes oh. with a, a short one and a long taper. Fantastic. But they're all that same thickness as the other mandrels. Yeah. So, so I've got the, what, yeah, I've got the 2.5 and the 1.5. Yeah. These. And these are stepped mandrels. So yeah. tempered mandrels, what is, uh, for those who may not know, what's the difference between like the step mandrel like this versus the taper clip mandrel that you're, you're launching now? So on, let's see, on this mandrel here, mm -hmm. one wrap of one side made this chain. Okay. So it works out to about 30 inches of chain. Uh, and what you end up having is one size link here. And as you get down closer, you have your smaller links. So right. you can end up with a graduated link chain. Right. Or what is really fun is to just take all these man, all these and cut them, throw them in a bucket, and then link them together randomly. So you have this like random link. Those look so link. good too, don't yeah. they? Yeah, and I like I like those. So what, what ends up happening with this one, there's uh, one inch here and it's quarter inch here. And then that taper is, I think I did the four inches on that taper. Yeah. Whereas this one is 1.25 inches tall and it tapers down to a quarter, but that taper happens over about two inches. Okay. So, so that one's good for like bracelets then. Yeah, exactly. Bracelets or... Uh, a larger, a larger variance of that taper because right. this taper is much slower. This right. taper is much quicker, and you end up with a larger variance of those links. Right. Well, the other thing that'd be really fun to do is to get you know some of your tapers, and then you know if you were doing just a, a solid size around the back, and then have it you know get bigger to the front, yep. you could actually use it in combination with these mantles too, right? Yeah, that's what I had intended was okay. to have, say, for example, I use the middle step on the medium mandrel. Right. And whatever thickness I wanted. I made a bunch of those and then I wanted to taper from that size smaller. I can take my calipers. I can measure on my mandrel where that link starts, the inside dimension, mm -hmm. measure where it is there. I'll put a little mark on it with a Sharpie. And then that way I know that I can taper from that point down to gradually taper that size link to make my necklace look, you know, this or that, or cool. taper up. Cool. Um, and those come in the same width. So it'd be the same uh, exactly. implied dimension on the, the width too. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Well, um, yeah. Then you know me, I, I like them chonky. I like my chonky paper clip. Oh, yeah. So, so the, uh, the, what I, what, why they're shaped like this um, is that if I wanted to do a wrap on either side, I have the same wrap. And if I just want to wrap on one side or I'm using a smaller mandrel, I'll put this in a ring clamp. Oh, that's smart. And then I can use that to twirl around and I can just turn around and put it in a ring clamp the other side too. Yeah, yeah. Um, the nice thing about these guys though, is that when I snip my link, it slides right off because it's tapered and it's not the same diameter. So you right. end up not having the same sticking issue that you do with a lot of the other kind of oval or uh, paper clip. Well, mandrel. what I did with mine when I was making my uh, twisted clips, uh, paper clip chain things was I used the, uh, what did I use? This end. Yeah, use that end. Um, and wrapped it and then I was able to heat it up, which was mm -hmm. great, to anneal the wires so that as I pulled them off, they didn't untwist. Yeah. And that was one of the nice things about the stainless steel. That, um, so I'll actually wrap paper around my mandrel and yeah. then wrap it. And then I'll anneal the chain on the mandrel. The paper burns away and that little couple extra layers of paper burns away and then you can slide it right off. Right. Yeah. Mine just slid right off without any resistance at all. I, um, I've had a couple people complain or have issues with that 
one of the things you can do is when you have it all wrapped up, take your rawhide hammer to a bench block and just give it a little tap. What that's going to do is it's going to relax in one direction a little bit. And then you can anneal and it should just come right off. Right. Yeah. Um, you can even use like parallel pliers or something mm -hmm. for that to do. That works yep. great. Uh, Jen uh, Serene did a nice gold paper lip clip chain and she used her parallel pliers to even up the links before she slid them off. And yeah. then uh, a lot of the time, you know, you can change the look of your chain by using half round wire or square wire or, you know, round or triangle. And you can, you can create a lot of different chains just with uh, the variance of the wire and the thicknesses of the metal that you use. Um, some people ask why some are thinner, why some are thicker. Uh, you have to, the thinner ones, I'll use my thinner gauge wire. So I'll use my, you know, between usually uh, right around I, 18 is the thickest that I would go with this, but I need to make sure that when I make this link, my 18 is going to loop through that other loop because. Right. Cause that's your dimension. internal dimension of your link. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, so are those two, the taper clips, the same, um, the same taper? Are they the same length and taper? No. Oh, they're different. The short so ones. these guys, these three are all the same. Oh, okay. So you can because stack they're them. just different thicknesses. So you can stack them together. Yeah, you can stack them. Okay. But the other one, these guys. Okay. So when you buy one paper clip, one taper clip, you get the same thickness. These two together. Right. Okay. And that way you have basically two, two different variations block. of that mandrel. And because there's less material here and these guys are kind of small, I didn't want to like break it up. I thought it was, it'd be a little fun to get this in a little kit. And yeah, and that, that makes it so that you buy, if you buy the, the set, you're actually paying less for the set of six than you are for, for other things. So that's it, true. It, yeah. Well, yeah, that works out good. I love it. So yeah. one of the things that I like to do with mine too because sometimes, you know, that's great to sort of make sure they're a consistent starting length and shape. So you've got your basics down and then you cut it and things get a little wonky. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're fusing or soldering them together, sometimes they get a little out of round. So you could put them back on the mandrel and reshape them after they're soldered. Or what I like, I love these pliers, Chris. Oh, I know you do. <laughs> so these guys in conjunction with the pegs that come with them um, are really helpful because I can put my soldered link in there and just go yoink and just, and I, I make that noise when I do it too. It's like yoink every, every time. time. Every, every time. time. <laughs> so but one of the, one really of the reasons why I, I made these the way that I do. And I, and I think I can't remember if you and I think the same way or we have I can't remember, but that's the fun part of this is that, so with these links, I prefer to cut it on this portion here. Yeah. That way, when I link my chain, my, my area is hidden. Your solder what seems you hidden. find right. traditionally right. before paperclip mandrels are around, um, people would cut them right here mm -hmm. because these weren't soldered by the way. So <laughs> um, people would cut them right here. Yeah. And then um, when they'd stretch them, they would make it so that stretch, that cut point was on the flats, right. the long flats, because they didn't want that to break when they stretched it. Yeah, but the nice press. part about having the paperclip mandrel is that you're, if you're not like excessively stretching it, you're not going to have to worry about necessarily popping that joint. Well, it's already shaped too. And if you've exactly. got a successful solder seam, that shouldn't happen. Exactly. Anyway. So, and if you are, um, one of the other things that's really great about that, and I know Julia does a lot of the, the fused foxtail chains mm -hmm. and being able to have a longer link is really helpful because a lot of times you're folding it over and, and even if it's thin, if you're doing a double loop and loop, sometimes it's better to have a longer link. Um, and those can be soldered. What, um, I have done traditionally uh, is using something like 
ring mandrels like these, mm -hmm. which are used a lot for PMC and wax forming stuff. Um, but these are great for winding coils and making, okay. yeah, and making like consistent size shapes and lengths. Um, aside from doing things like stack rings, this is really good for like measuring it out to make sure it's the same every time and then solder it and then give it a noink and uh, make that well, happen. One of the other cool things about the paper clip mandrel though, since you mentioned foxtail chains, yeah. is that this is what you end up doing all that work to get mm -hmm. when you right. start doing your foxtail chain. So now you have a mandrel that'll do that for you. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm going to play around with the idea of using the taper clip to make foxtail chains so that uh -huh. each foxtail link yeah, looks that's, a little bit different. Yeah. If you look at any of Julia's uh, foxtail chains and any of her, a lot of her other chain work that she does, she has a taper from the back to the front. So you've got the smaller links and then the bigger. And, yeah, has, so. you know, it does all the math for all that too, whether it's the, um, uh, different chain patterns or uh, the foxtail patterns that she's doing. So yeah. she's actually got her foxtail chain class coming up in March as well. She's got the Cuban chain on uh, the 18th as well. So I've got paper clip in the morning and I think she's got um, Cuban chain in the afternoon. And then I've she's taken got both music. of those classes. They're fantastic. Yeah. It's she's, she is so amazing. She's so amazing. Um, then she's got fusing fine silver and foxtail chains the following weekend on the 25th and 26th. So that it, there's like two steps to doing that kind of foxtail chain where you're you know, fusing the links and you usually want to do it in like a fine silver or a gentian that's very soft. It's a dead soft material yeah. that you have because um, you have to like stretch it and then fold it and pinch it and thread it through and pull it again. And the fine silver sometimes can't handle that amount of abuse, uh, but the fine silver is malleable enough that it can withstand all that. So, um, but it does take some prep time getting all the links ready and then doing the weaving with it uh, the next day. So that's what Julia's going to do. Yeah, uh, also got a ribbon thing, chain class coming The up last too. chain that I did, like box tail chain I did, yeah. I did my oval links on a paperclip mandrel and then I took those links with my uh, pulse arc welder and I used the pulse arc welder to fuse all of them together for me. Oh, that's and fun. it was quick. I'll bet it was. Yeah. And fine silver and argentium both work really, really well with the welders for fusing because they fuse on the welder a lot the same way they fuse with the soldering or the. Or the oh, port. yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but anyway, yeah. So that's going to be good. Um, so if you're interested in doing chain, you were like, it's just, it's chain madness here in March coming up. Yeah. Um, so yay. Uh, let's see if we have any other questions. Um, uh, oh yeah. Uh, knife spot says it can double as ninja throwing stars uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> there. You'd have to sharpen them, but yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so, um, so what other, uh, have you got other secrets going on with tools that you're developing uh we i just had the laser cut uh petals version of the soldering stencils uh arrive today Yay. So those will be shipped out to you guys the Great. team and then all the outstanding orders those will be probably fulfilled tomorrow um I love those shapes, Chris. I think they're going to be great. The, so the I I did something different this year. This time I did some an XL version, and I took a picture of them in my hand, and the three next to each other take up my entire hand. Oh, so wow. they're like the XL ones are big. I'm wow. I may only do those as like a special release because it takes a lot of titanium in order to make those, and I can. I, I can only sell them in a set of three and have it be pretty they viable. Cut, cut them out concentrically. What's that? Do they cut them out concentrically? So they're like one inside another? Uh, so the large ones, yes. So the same sizes. So if you get the extra XL and the other set, the XL set will fit and everything else will fit inside the XLs. Cool, cool. But good. all the shapes are concentric. So they will fit inside of each other. Oh, that's so good. I really like the fact that I can use uh, those soldering stencils for soldering and not just, 
And I know Michelle developed them for uh, for filigree and with you and for like borderless filigree was the whole idea behind them. Yeah. But they're for me a really great soldering tool, um, just to help hold stuff where I need it to be, you know, and keep yeah. like things from floating around or moving um, instead of using things like I have to pin in. Sometimes pinning isn't it doesn't work well if it's on top of something else. And um, sometimes like, you know, pointy things don't work or can't reach, but those things can be really great and very versatile for sort of um, setting stuff down, keeping it where I want it, adding just, you know, a little bit of weight to it or a frame so it can't escape, you know, which I have found to be really helpful. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's kind of the basis behind a lot of the tools that we try and develop is that it has more than one use. Yeah. or there's more than one thing that you can do with it. And, you know, whether that's using different kinds of wire on the mandrel to make, you know, tapered links or yeah. you know, whatever. So right. I like doing this with twisted chain, speaking of, yeah. you know, making it versatile. Um, so I'm using like a, a bright, you know, twisted chain that's, that ends up being about, oh, where's my, my gauge? Let's see, these are about, um, about a 16, 15, about a 15 gauge, 16, 15, 16 gauge, somewhere there, um, when they're, you know, all, all twisted up, but, um, I like that, and I like using half round wire for el elongated ovals or paper clips. Yeah. What, what's your, I know you did some with square wire, and those look I, great. So square wire is harder to work with, especially if you use some of the, the thicker, beefier gauges. Um, but I think that it turns out pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that you can do if you really wanted to get intricate, and I'm, I'm probably going to do this, is I like to take the square wire of a nice chunky gauge, make my links, and then if you guys have watched any of my Instagram, I've been doing a lot of delicate engraving. Oh, I'd yes. Like to, I'd like to engrave the links individually with like scrolls and stuff. Oh, cool. Um, so, yeah. You're getting so fancy you with use, your engraver. Yeah. So <laughs> if you use chunkier, chunkier chains, I, ah. I don't know if you knew this or not, but I, I ended up getting, I liked engraving so much that I bought a Lindsay, mm -hmm. an air graver. Um, and it's helped me so much understand more about how I can potentially use the engraving adapter. Um, but that's the whole point of the engraving adapter was seeing whether or not you wanted to do something like that before you invested more money into it. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it was the natural progression. I still, I still use it. I still. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's great for like, you know, doing things. I really like it for doing bead setting. Cause it's like mm -hmm. da, 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 done, you know, yeah. really, really quick. And I don't have to spend a huge chunk of change on an air graver when I'm not really using it a lot for engraving for fine engraving. And I'm using it as an engraving tool which I like to use and I've got, you know, plenty of, you know, hand engravers, but that just takes a lot of the work out of it, you know, and, yeah. and I really like it for that. So. Well, and too, when I want to use my, my air graver, I turn on my air compressor. I turn on my air settings. I find the right graver. I make sure everything is set up the way that it needs to be set up and afford that air grave. There's a lot more technical stuff that goes into getting yeah. that set up and going. <laughs> Well, and, yeah. it's, and you have to be able to do that. You have to be able to, you know, know how to work with a graver, know how to sharpen them, know how to turn on your air compressor and, <laughs> and all yep. this stuff. But I'm very excited about this. this I am. Is... So to answer your question, square wire is probably my favorite to use Yeah. Um, for like fun, chonky links. Uh, yeah. I like thicker gauge wire too, especially I've done the, like the twisted one with uh, barbed Dog wire. Bone. The dog, dog bone. bone. Yeah. Yeah, those um, look good. I really like uh, the way that triangle wire looks on chains like that too. It's a really different look. It looks very medieval when you yeah. use like a, a triangle wire with it. But, but then there's also the, the variance so that you could mix the the paper clips with round or mm -hmm. with uh you know a triangle or with you know 
all all the other things that you could do but you take around and connect you to connect the uh the paper clips and or you know do a pattern two rounds yeah, yeah. to one paper clip and so there's all these different fun options Absolutely. i yeah. i really like them uh I, i'm with you i like the chonky chains the chonky chains mm -hmm. well even if you're doing like a like a square and the the smaller one's almost square on that end yeah. one kind of wide you could do um like two links and then almost a square and then two links and then kind of a square so yeah. it keeps it sort of parallel and gives you a whole nother pattern so but then, then there's the other thing where is that as you're cutting your links you you don't have to cut each individual link you can you can arrange it and cut it so you cut two that are next to each other and then cut them in twos it's a little bit more work to be able to do that because you're having to separate them and snip them but you can always separate them and have them together in two uh mm -hmm. the other thing is is that if you wanted to uh make a paper clip shaped tube you could wrap your coils around your mandrel slide it off and then solder that tube together to create a paper clip tube with the oh, ribbon use it just fuse it all together if it's use it so fuse it or solder it together to create a ribbed tube i like it I like it what would i do with it is it for a bead Make a bead well, out of it. It'd be fun to be able to do uh so off the topic of, of paperclip, but do like a round one uh -huh. and then do a flush set stone in the tip of it. So you have that round rib of uh -oh. a with a flush set stone in the top of it. That could be fun. That could yeah. be fun. Well, plus so. if you're doing like two next to each other, you're gonna have a crossover. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got the sort of a crossover for soldering it, it gives you sort of a, like a Mobius strip yeah. of wire well, and the nice thing about the tube is that you can also bend it over slightly so if it's tall you can bend it and then set a stone in that little bend or have, have like make hoop earrings out of them yeah little oh, eyes yeah yeah make little like cornucopias out of them or yeah. use that as a captured bead so oh yeah oh yeah that that tube as a captured bead so yeah well and if you don't anneal it they kind of like spring apart and yeah. that could be fun to solder yeah. like in that twist absolutely so yeah. i mean there's there's all sorts of fun things that you can do that you know, think thinking outside the box a little bit you don't have to wrap the entire length of wire around the chain to fill it up you can wrap two and then slide it off and wrap two and slide it off right, and right. Way you're creating those things without necessarily needing to cut them well one of the tricks that i know that i like to do if i'm doing a um doing concentric circles or i mm -hmm. want them to be a little more spread apart is and maybe this is maybe i maybe this is what you were saying and i just didn't understand you but taking two wires parallel and wrapping them at the same time yep. and then you get a little bit yeah they're a little bit wider apart mm -hmm. um but you also get a, a bigger differential in the, the shapes too and you can also uh, we weave those into each other to create a mm -hmm. uh, a mesh and then yep. there's all yep. sorts of other fun stuff you can do with those yeah, yeah. and do like a rope twist mm -hmm. Yep. It's just fun. Awesome. Yeah. But I mean, so what, uh, we've talked a little bit about the paper chain class. So what, uh, give you, are you going to give like a little hint on the kind of maybe some variation or some, uh, what you on plan what? on what? Give, give me a hint on what? I, I want to know what you got planned for those things. I mean, because knowing, knowing you, it's not just making paper clip chains. Well, that's what I really like to do. <laughs> um, so, but um, talking about sort of fusing those links too, and mm -hmm. some of the technical stuff to just make it make it look good. You know, yeah. I think um, that sometimes, kind of like with stone setting, it can be. It's not just about getting the stone in the setting, but it's the finishing of it yeah. that, that makes it rock. Um, that makes your stones rock. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's it's kind of like that with this for me because getting it to look you know consistent and you know takes takes a little bit of finessing and yeah. there are a couple of different ways you can do it and a couple of different tools that i use for that um so yeah yes so i'm going to work with i've got argentium fine silver and sterling that i'm going to be working with 
So one of the one of the things that I like to do, and I've become more aware of this now that I've been doing more engraving, is that light dark contrast. Oh yeah, yeah. So so texturing one area and then keeping one area polished and then mm -hmm. adding a patina and then taking the patina off in certain areas. So you yeah, have I'll do I'll do a um a like a patinaed patina a bunch of my links and then join them with a high polish link. Yeah. So I'll get like a mm -hmm. black and white sort of you version. Could actually, of uh, version. You could do uh, like gold solder melt on them too. So absolutely, them. yeah, absolutely. So there's, that's always a great touch too. Um, but yeah, using gold solder uh, deliberately. So it shows mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine does that with her, a lot of her chain, a lot of her pieces where she's using a, um, soldering all of her links with gold solder on nice. her sterling and patina is at all black and yeah. so you've got that beautiful you know velvety black finish and then that gold you, on you, usually all of like eight, 18 karat is probably my go-to solder that's what she's using that. yeah 18 yeah. or 22 yeah because it, it shows up so much brighter mm -hmm. yep yep absolutely well you're going to join us for the class yeah I'm very excited about that. And I love the fact that um, a lot of times when we're doing a class with products that you have created, that you're there to answer questions. And I think that's always uh, a big benefit to the students when they can you know, ask you directly uh, about this kind of thing. So well, the, the other side of it too, is that a lot of the things that I've come out in my own business haven't been just because of my own input it's been the input of you guys and a lot of other artists that are trying to do something and um a lot of the time it's it's not necessarily it's somebody else giving me a task to i have this problem that i need a solution to mm -hmm. and so when i'm evaluating the problem i end up creating a solution and sometimes that solution is good and sometimes it needs to go back to the drawing board but the whole idea is to be able to listen and talk to people about the problems that they're having and what they want to try and do with their work and then be able to develop tools and techniques to uh, make that happen, make it happen easier. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, just being able to sort of bounce ideas off people and, yeah. you know, you never know where ideas are going to come from. Well, our product team has been fantastic for that is you know, it's that good bunch of people. It's really been good. it's been a hundred percent better than I thought it was going to be. Really? Yeah, it's one hundred and twenty percent. That you know, that's one of the. I have to say, I, I've got a design class coming up, and I have to say, one of the best tools that you can find is being able to connect with people that you can work with and communicate with that are going to be honest with you and share ideas yeah. and being objective about what you're doing and being able to help everybody be better at what they're doing. And so for me coming from, you know, an art school background and doing things like uh, critique class and in a way that is, you know, objective and honest and, uh, you know, being very, you know, being directed, being like, this is, this is what I'm seeing. This is why being able to ask questions and, and not just being objective about your, your comments on what you're doing or what someone else is doing, but, but not taking it personally, because if you feel like you're in a safe environment where people can share those ideas and, um, and, uh, ideas and concerns and criticisms and, you know, whatever it is, you know, it's going to challenge what you're doing and what you're thinking in a way that is going to help you evolve and grow. And I, I really believe that that group is, does that. And I'm, yeah. I'm really happy to be part of it. So. And, and the, the whole, the whole point, and, and you know, you, you kind of run through your head who, who do you want to be on that sounding board? And one of the main criteria for me was I wanted a bunch of people from different, different areas of the industry mm -hmm. 
that weren't necessarily doing the same things as each other. Right. That have shown a propensity to tell me that I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> but, but, but the the whole what I, question, I mean, what I mean question is, why you made yeah, that decision. So that is, exactly. And that's that's what I mean. To, yeah. to say, um, have you thought about this? Yeah, yeah. So. Or just say, you know, I, I'm not getting that. Why, why would you do it like this and not like yeah. this? And and many times any that I have asked you for clarification, you you have always given me like this is what I was thinking and why. And I'm like, okay, all right, I can I can see that and yeah. how it can be used for that. And and it and you're really good at communicating that back as well and being really honest and a good communicator about about your ideas. So that's always helpful. That it's a must. Otherwise, yeah. you know, you you end up stewing in your own swamp and and you, you don't invite people over to yeah. make that swamp into a hot tub yeah yeah it's you know evolve or die kind of situation yeah, exactly um, so, the, yeah that's where i'm at yeah and when i was in um I, was talking to, I think i was talking to julia about this recently we were talking about um you know grad school experiences and, and things and i said yeah when i was in grad school i at some point uh was reading sun tzu's art of war and, mm-hmm. and and the thing that really stuck with me was, you know, cultivate your enemies because they have nothing to lose. Yeah. You know, they're going to be honest with you and they're not worried about hurting your feelings. And they're going to tell you what they think of, you know, all of your weaknesses. And, you know, and if you can cultivate those people and by that, I mean, don't just subject yourself to, you know, yeah, having rocks thrown at yourself, but, you know, but being able to say, you know, in a, in a critique situation or in a, an atmosphere where you're getting feedback, um, when somebody's like, I hate it. And you're like, why? What do you hate? Yeah. <laughs> they kind of go, I know why. well, I hate that. It's like this. And it's like, huh? Okay. Tell me more. And they start talking to you. And when you, when they realize that you are respecting their opinion or listening to their opinion, a lot of times they'll just be like, here it is. This is what I think. And, and sometimes it changes your mind about what you're doing. And sometimes it doesn't, but, but they know they have nothing to lose by telling you that because they couldn't care less about you. (laughs) And 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 I've had a lot of, uh, I've actually grown a lot of really good long friendships out of people who initially were, you know, in that camp, they were like, I have, I have nothing to lose. I don't care. You know, and yeah. just be, you know, point honest with me. And we've built a really great, respectful relationship because we listen to each other and we can be honest to, with each yeah. other. And, you know, it's it's really, really helpful. It really and is. Helpful. I, I would hope that in the, in the time that I've been in the industry that I've at least started to cultivate the uh, reputation of, of at least listening to what people have to say. Yeah. And, and taking it to heart if it, you know, if it's constructive and it's polite and it's, you know, something that, you know, this may, may be from somebody who has a little bit more experience than in something than, than I do. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm willing to listen to those things. And right. I know you are too, especially when it comes to after class critiques and, yeah. you know, could we add this or do that? Or I didn't like this. And it's, I mean, that's, that's how you end up creating a product for somebody yeah. that they want to come back for. Right. Right. Well, and, and knowing that again, that like that this thing isn't, is perfect and that there's always room for improvement. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, and, and it's not the thing that you've created is not part of your soul. It's, it's an object that that can be improved, and yeah. and I think sometimes, especially uh, young artists, have a hard time with that because it's it, it a lot of art is very much an expression of yourself and your ideas and your thoughts, and sometimes it can be really personal and it can be um, very people are being very vulnerable when they're putting those ideas out in the world, and um, and sometimes it's hard, you know, to hear that other people one don't don't like your idea or don't get it um don't don't think your art's the best art of all the art yeah and and it's like you know (laughs) i think it sucks it's like i worked so hard and it's like you did what did you learn you know you worked hard 
you learned all these things along the way. So one of the one of the things that, that I've tried to do as an artist is at least if I don't like somebody's style or art, yeah. try and try and recognize that that I yes. don't I don't find myself thinking that that is appealing, but then taking that feeling off the table and evaluate it from a technical standpoint. Right. Look right. at it from, okay, I don't necessarily like that, but let's, let's look at what it took in order to do it. Right. And yeah. then I can find the appreciation there, for it. There are so many, so many things that, that I have had to critique that are not something that are my flavor, you know, not anything that I would want, but looking at, you know, formal values, looking at, you know, line, the form, the balance, you know, just the formal composition of the piece, the presentation yeah. of the piece. And, and if there is something that is, you know, behind the piece that's important in terms of, you know, the idea, you know, mm -hmm. is that idea coming across in a way that they are trying to express it? And if I'm giving them feedback that it's like, this is the idea, this is what I'm seeing, I don't know if, if everybody's seeing that, but this is what I see when I look at this. Is that what you're trying to say? And give them, you know, honest, respectful, you know. Uh, yeah. Feedback. And so is it, this it, just the old adage that it doesn't it doesn't matter whether or not when it comes to that kind of thing, that that kind of, you know, critique, it doesn't matter whether or not you like it or. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right this other level that you can look at and appreciate yeah despite the fact that you may not like it or agree right. with it right right there's always something that that it's like what i think when when i'm working with students who haven't ever done you know any sort of critique class uh or given any sort of uh feedback or criticism in a class um that you know it's not about you liking it or not liking it it's about what's working and what's not, um, whether it's aesthetic or technical or conceptual. What is, is, you know, is it the right size? Is it the right shape? Is it the right color? You know, what, you know, for what they're trying to achieve. And sometimes it can be uncomfortable. It can be, you know, hard to, to talk yeah. about some of those things if you feel like you're not in a safe environment to be able to discuss that stuff. So I think being able to create that, uh, that secure environment is really important. And again, you know, cultivating those, those people around you that um, see things differently, you yeah. know, they're coming from a different place and yeah. So, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the whole idea behind the product team and, and, you know, what, what you've done with, little metal foxes and julia and helen and and all that is it is you know it cultivates those things and especially in like the production class that you have it makes you think about is this something am i doing this maybe the right way yeah and these are other other things that i maybe need to think about so when is that class coming up i'm um, hoping to do it again in the fall actually mm -hmm. so yeah. it's it's always kind of nice to do it before the holidays <laughs> so that you can kind of gear up for the holidays. Um, and I do have a couple of things on the schedule I'm really excited about are uh, doing some wax molding, nice. like simple, simple wax molding in the studio. Um, if you're wanting to send things out. Um, so I'm gonna do a, uh, a weekend workshop on, on doing some wax molds. And I've got a wax class coming up as well. So for the people that wanna do a production uh, style casting or um, or one-offs, it's a good class for them. Yeah, to those of you guys who know, know Jennifer is a uh, is a pretty much a cast master. It's true, <laughs> master caster. Master caster. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, all of all of these up here, those are those are all wax molds. <laughs> Got a lot of them up there. So all your all your rubbers. <laughs> all that so anyway chris i'm really excited about the paperclip chain class yeah, i can't wait i can't wait to see the new taper clips and um yeah and test it out yeah they'll be in the mail to you this week great so the great. rest of the product team will have them and you'll have them and, okay. and plenty of time to play with 
Yeah, those are cool. So come come play on the paper clip. Yeah. And you don't you don't need to make an entire link to to have it work either. You got three right? links on there. And I mean, it's if it's like a graduated link like that, yeah. you know, and you've got that can make some really cool earrings. And again, you know, if you're making just shapes, like you said, you know, it doesn't even have to be a chain. If I'm making shapes that are, you know, part of a stone setting or you know whatever. All and kinds of possibilities. You can, All kinds of possibilities. So with these guys, mm. I can take a wire and loop it through here and through here and wrap it around once and then wrap. And so I can change the profile of, you know, or super glue a wire on both sides and then do my wrap and change the profiles. So, I mean, there's. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Got the wheels turning now. Got so many ideas in that brain of yours. Mm. <laughs> yeah. How do you ever do you just like do you have like a longer day than most people do? I do. I I went to a 36 hour day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how people ask how that works and well, I took the 24 hour clock oh. and I added more hours to it. What well, you know what that does? It makes for a shorter week too. <laughs> yeah, and my years don't last nearly as long. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. I'm well, on my years. Thank you so much. And <laughs> I will uh, I will check in with you later on. And um, I'm so glad you joined us to tell us, talk to me about paper clip chains oh, tonight. Yeah. And um, I will see you later on. Um, and uh, and check in, you guys, check in with little metal foxes to see all the classes that are coming up check in with lion punch forge to see all the new tools that are coming up and uh there's there's all kinds of crossover so <laughs> all over play. play with us we're, we're lots of fun lots of fun so and check out the instagram for sure and i've had all my shots <laughs> me too <laughs> All right. I will see you later. Have a great week, everybody. And we'll see you. Oh, and I've got a whole bunch of things planned for April uh, because April is Earth Month. And I've got, um, oh, I'm so excited. I think I've got uh, one of the guys from uh, Hoover and Strong is going to talk to us about recycled metal, the harmony metal that they do and uh, sustainable practices in the studio. I've got uh, somebody from the goldsmith uh ethical goldsmith society that's going to be talking to us i think as well and um i think somebody from puget sound keepers alliance who are does guys, really cool stuff so you're gonna do is it is it the five dollar safety talk or is it the free safety talk the, the it's it, actually it is um i think it's five five or ten dollars on our website and julia goes into sustainable um chemical disposal in the studio too. I yeah. would, I would always recommend if you, if you can, if you're a teacher and you buy that and want to share it with your class, if you are, um, you know, in a studio with a whole bunch of other people, buy it, share it with all of them, because it's one of those things that we, the only charge on there is so that we can keep it listed. <laughs> so if we have people, you know, if we want to make it available and to do that, you know, it costs us money. So it's just, you know, we're just, trying to keep it up there for everybody to, to be able to see it and be able to watch it. So it's like five or 10 bucks, I think. Um, so yeah, go check that out. But it goes, she goes through lighting and ventilation and chemical disposal and everything else. So. And you have, you have a couple other critical like core classes too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have uh, our core, uh, core skills that yes. are uh, sawing, drilling, soldering, and filing. So right it's in they're all incredibly thorough they get you the basics and those classes don't expire either so neither does the, the chemical safety one so you have constant access to those classes um so yeah we want to make sure that everybody's you know working safely that they've got the basics under their belt and um and there's a package a bundle for those that you can do for i think it's under 100 bucks so well, it's, you know, for all of them, it's real. Once you have all that, you, you, you can feel comfortable signing up for maybe some of the, the more advanced classes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Have a great night, buddy. Yeah. I'm going to go. Get I, will, I will see you later on. Have a good one. And uh, yeah, everybody stay safe and have a great week. We'll see you next you week. Can.